Okay, somebody asked me today about the differences in power enrichment uh, on some of the GM files. And, you know, I've been doing this so long, even if they change something, it, I don't really notice because it's, you know, it's once you've been doing this a while, the changing power enrichment becomes very simple. Now, the vehicle we have here is a 2019 Chevy Corvette Z06. This is a 6.2 supercharged. Um, I believe this is an LT1, um, if I remember correctly. Now, you'll notice on the power enrichment screen, there's a lot more stuff here. Um, knock enrichment, do not mess with that. That's something that you do farther down the road. Uh, what you need to be worried about are these four tables. Now, this is a car. So being a car, I put enable pedal at 30%. Uh, I left the RPM stuff alone. Torque, I put enable torque at 30%. You have an RPM delay um, that you can pick the delay or the RPM, minimum RPM required to go into power enrichment mode. Uh, most vehicles, I put it at 1200 RPMs. Um, we have also a torque percent here as well. Um, you can adjust that there. Um, ECT minimum. PE mode is delayed if ECT is above this value. Um, chances are when you open up a file, this is going to say negative 400 and this is going to say positive 400. So we change this to 256, which gets rid of the del temperature delay. Um, and then I put this car to zero. This is a Corvette. Um, there's no reason it needs to be on the street when it's negative 30 outside. So zero is good enough. Uh, I leave delay at zero. Now uh, we have a ramp in and ramp out. Uh, this is a boosted vehicle. Boosted vehicles, I like to run a ramp in rate of two. But for most vehicles, I like to run an in and out rate of one. Uh, it's a great start point. Now, if your air fuels are correct, but when you go into PE, the car starts bogging out, chances are your rate is too high and you're essentially flooding out the motor. Um, boosted vehicle again as well okay so what you're going to look at here and let's go to calculator you're going to type in four you know what let's do it on here calculator my bad 14.7 which is stoic divided by 1.222 equals oh i messed that up hit the times button divided by 1.222 equals 12 to 1 air fuel ratio now on most naturally aspirated cars 12.8 to 1 is the perfect air fuel ratio you'd have to put it on a dyno from there otherwise to find out where you're going this is a boosted vehicle the lowest PE we have here 12 to 1 now 14.7 divided by 1.310 equals 11.2 to 1. So we're not even running this car crazy rich. You could even get down into the 10s. But basically, we're at 12 to 1 here, close to 11 to 1 here. Being a boosted vehicle, uh, that's that's a good starting point. Obviously, you're going to need to get on a dyno with a wide band to uh, physically adjust these um, to be perfect. Now you have an EQ ratio for alcohol as well. This car is not running on alcohol. This table has not been changed. Um, so that is going to be a Gen 5 vehicle. Let's open up a Gen 4 vehicle here. Let's see. Um, let's open up something cool here. Let's find here. Um, here we go, 7 liter, this is a Gen 4 2011 Camaro SS that has a 427 installed in it um, with a very very big cam running about 8200 RPMs. Um, 
I believe that this file was tuned before some of this stuff was updated. So some of this stuff wasn't there when this vehicle was actually tuned. So we're going to change this here to ramp out at the same rate it ramps in. Power enrichment, we are running 14.7 divided by 1.171 equals. So we're on a 12 and a half to 1, uh, which on the street this car seemed to run really well at. Now, you'll notice that this table is flat all the way across. This car did not make it to the dyno before we traded the vehicle off. Um, so this was the base set number that before we got on the dyno. Um, RPM delay again would be down at 1200. If vehicle speed is below a certain value, the delay timer is bypassed. Set that at 200, upper delay. Temperature is set above the current measurement, the delay timer is bypassed. Temperature set below the current measurement of delay timer is bypassed. See this, now I might have been backwards on that Corvette still. So you're actually going to want to have this, you know, below whatever temperature and you're going to have this above every temperature. So basically if it's below this temperature, it's bypassed. If it's above this temperature, it's bypassed. See right here, I use 30% throttle down at lower RPMs, 19% throttle at upper RPMs. On the highway, you're always cruising right around here which is why I did this so that way you never have to worry about going up a, just a little bit of a bump in a hill and put it in power enrichment mode. So like I said this is a Gen 4 vehicle this is a Gen 4 car so you can see that we're missing some stuff here but it's very close. Okay we're actually going to save this so that file is more correct. Now we're going to open up another file. We are going to go I'll do the file that I did this morning here we go. Let's open up this Cobalt SS. This Cobalt SS is tuned on ethanol. It is a supercharged Cobalt. Now if you notice that there's barely anything here. 30% throttle again. It's my favorite. 1200 RPM is also something I like to use. Um, and then this is the current table for enrichment rate. Uh, I'm not going to go over this one because this is... Um, an ethanol vehicle. But you can see here it starts off... Um, at 1.2 ratio and it goes all the way up to 1.4 so as the RPMs and boost increase it, it injects more fuel. Uh, being boosted we run an enrichment ramp in rate of 2 um, and, and NA I would have had it down at 1. So those are the differences between power enrichment between a 3rd gen vehicle, a 4th gen vehicle and a 5th gen. Uh, I will open up one more vehicle that's a little bit older just to kind of get uh, an idea if it changed really. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is a Gen 3 2000 Silverado with a 6L swap. You can see there's even less tables here. Um, this vehicle specifically, based on the build, we're running a zero RPM delay. Um, we, Because it is a truck, we're running a higher throttle on it. I usually don't mess with the cold enrichment rate I usually leave that alone um, and then this vehicle here this vehicle was not tuned by me and I believe we actually left it where the previous tuner had it so this was the enrichment ramp and rate or not ramp and rate my sorry the enrichment uh, air fuel ratio from the last tuner we, we left this alone it was a quality running truck to begin with um, so there's there's four different vehicles and you can see now based on the four vehicles the differences in what we have for power enrichment on GM vehicles. Um, you know, last but not least, we have this ECT adder. This is a multiplier. I shouldn't say multiplier. This is an adder. Um, you can add fuel for cold start, add fuel when the engine starts getting hot to help cool it down, uh, and you just leave it at zero in the normal operating ranges.